You put out two albums, two EPs. You have the thing with Connor, and you have one more band, mm -hmm. right? And you've done all of that in the same time we toured on our last album. I think I'm writing regardless of what form it's going to take. So if someone's like, hey, we should start a band, I'm like, cool, I have, you know, three new songs that could be sweet. Or hey guys, welcome back to Realist Rhythm. In today's video, we're going to talk about a successful singer, songwriter, and guitarist who was born in Los Angeles and went on to become one of the most prominent indie rock musicians. I am talking about Phoebe Bridgers. We loved her song Smoke Signals and her album Punisher. And of course, fans love to attend her live concerts. But have you ever wondered what Phoebe was doing before she became famous? What sort of challenges she has faced in life? And when she decided to become a musician? We'll tell you all the secrets on this musician, so make sure you watch this video till the very end. So we're talking about a talented artist who started her musical career in 2017 with the release of her solo debut album called Stranger in the Alps, which was followed by her album Punisher released in 2020. Phoebe Lucille Bridgers, born on August 17, 1994, is a four-time Grammy Award nominee and is also known for being a member of musical groups such as Better Oblivion Community Center and Boy Genius. This means that she is just 26 years old and already a star. Born and raised in Pasadena, California, she used to make extra money by busking at the Pasadena Farmer's Market during her childhood. She started playing guitar seriously around the age of 13. Her icons live on in her music. It's worth mentioning that the singer told Rolling Stone in an interview in 2020 that her guitar style was entirely influenced by Eddie Van Halen. Moreover, Phoebe told NPR in an interview that she is obsessed with Elliot Smith. When the singer was asked when she decided to pursue a career in music, Phoebe told The Guardian in an interview in 2020 that she always wanted to be a popular music artist. Phoebe said, I felt like I had a God-given gift. At age 12 or 13, I was just like, wow, I'm the next Bob Dylan. In order to hone her musical skills, Phoebe went to the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. She studied opera, music engineering, and jazz. After graduating from high school, the singer got an opportunity to study at the Berklee College of Music in Boston. Phoebe revealed in an interview with The New Yorker in May of 2020 that she left the Berklee College of Music after a heinous orientation. The singer said, I hit the ground running. I started playing a show every week in Los Angeles just trying to meet people. Here it is worth noting that while Bridgers was in high school, she had been a member of various bands such as Einstein's Dirty Secret and Sloppy Jane. After performing various solo shows around LA, Phoebe was eventually spotted by a talent manager. She had some roles in Home Goods, Intuit, Apple, and Taco Bell commercials. During this time, Bridgers wrote her first studio album, Stranger in the Alps. Moreover, she had met Ryan Adams through mutual collaborator Harrison Whitford. Adams became her boyfriend in 2014. The singer has said that Ryan reached out to her in 2014, and at that time, Phoebe was 20 years old. He offered to help her with her career and produced Phoebe's extended play titled Killer. She said that her professional correspondence with Adams turned into a romantic relationship that ultimately became abusive. In 2019, she was among many women who accused Adams of emotional abuse. Seven women and more than a dozen associates detailing a pattern of manipulative behavior by Adams. And he promised to help their careers only to turn his back if they rejected his unwanted advances. And while we're discussing Phoebe's relationship with Adams, Phoebe at one point realized that her interests did not only lie in men. Regardless, until recently in 2017, she was involved in a romantic relationship with Marshall Vore. Both of them co-wrote Phoebe's single titled I See You. Vore and Phoebe are still close friends and collaborators. Moreover, many people think that Phoebe's hit song Smoke Signals is about Marshall. It's also rumored that Bridgers has dated Connor Oberst, Paul Mescal, and Emily Bannon. And from 2011 to 2014, she was dating a man named Leonardo Lawrence. Currently, the 26-year-old singer is reportedly single. She's in it to win it. Before Phoebe released her hit single, Smoke Signals, in 2017, she supported Julian Baker on her tour of the East Coast in 2016. After releasing the song, she collaborated with Connor on his European tour. Then in June of that year, she was signed to Dead Oceans and went on to release her album Stranger in the Alps in September. This album was a massive success. It reached number 13 on the U.S. Heat Seekers Albums Chart in 2018 and number 17 on the U.S. Folks Albums Chart in 2020. You might want to note that Phoebe is referred to as a serial collaborator. Bridgers has collaborated with the 1975, Kid Cudi, the National Manchester Orchestra, Fiona Apple, Lord Huron, and Lucy Dacus. 
Then in 2018, she formed the group called Boy Genius with Lucy and Julian. The group is signed to Matador Records and they released three songs in August. On October 26th of that year, the group released an eponymous EP. After the success of this EP, Phoebe and Connor announced that they are forming Better Oblivion Community Center. The debut album of this band was released in January of 2019 under Dead Oceans. She continued working on her musical projects and released a single titled Garden Song in February of 2020. However, the most successful project of Phoebe in 2020 was her second studio album, Punisher, which earned her four Grammy Award nominations and a YouTube video on our channel. Realist Rhythm, congrats Phoebe! What did you think of her latest album? Don't forget to share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Getting Sidetracked Moreover, in 2020, she also launched her record label called Satisfactory through Dead Oceans. She was supposed to tour with the 1975 in 2020, however the tour was cancelled due to her participation in the world's largest Netflix binge-watching marathon that also started that year. Phoebe's next venture was announced on Twitter on November 3rd, 2020, that she would release a cover version of the song Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls if Biden won the White House, and recorded the cover version as a duet with Maggie Rogers under the name Phoebe and Maggie. In December, she went on to release the music video for a song called Savior Complex. She was also a musical guest on the 11th episode of the 46th season of SNL. She played the songs I Know the End and Kyoto. Phoebe has said that she is constantly working on her craft. In an interview, she said, I write all the time, very slowly, every day. Sometimes I spend all day doing it. Most days I put my guitar down the minute I want to kill somebody. That headspace isn't helpful, but some days it just happens. And when it's all flowing, it's more productive. And her relationship with Adams was not the only sad thing that has happened to her. The singer has also struggled with mental health issues like anxiety and major depressive disorder. Phoebe has sought therapy. However, the pandemic has changed her a lot. Like all other singers, her tours were canceled. I mean, in some ways, does it feel like the music almost isn't out there if you're not performing it? Yeah, it, it, the minute I turn my phone off, I don't exist. I like, I've never, I've never had such hard time affirming myself. Phoebe is indeed a hardworking and talented musician who continues to impress us with her songs. We can't wait to see what she comes up with next. We hope you liked today's video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And while you're here, click one of the two videos appearing on your screen. Enjoy the show!